Hello everyone, welcome back to the Stanley Parable. Now last time we uh, ended up blowing ourselves to pieces, so let's see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into this time. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Is that such a bad thing? They've all abandoned him and left him to himself. A couple more things on the left. When Stanley do. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I did. <coughs> Excuse me. Yet there was not a single person here either. Don't get fired. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Nope. I'm going to stay here for a bit and see how annoyed you get. I have a bit of a drink as well. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. But look at this. Look at the architecture of the wall. I mean, that wire needs fixing, but, you know, it's lovely in here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Yep, fuck all. Well, there's a bucket. Let me let me clean. Look how disgusting this place is. Come on. Are you are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Yeah. Why? So I want to. Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I like knickknacks. Look at all this cool stuff. Come on, surely you're not interested. You, are you do realise there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. Yeah, but I'm... It didn't even occur to me, because literally, Fine. this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. <laughs> I never would have thought to mention it. Well, I like it in here. You can't tell me what to do all the time. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favourite. I hope your friends find this concerning. You don't know what my friends are like. Although, yeah, I totally would do that. <laughs> Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Hey! He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Excuse me? Fuckface. Right. Where's this voice coming from? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. <laughs> you got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Seems about right. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. I'm not going to decompose that Hello? quickly. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Yeah, all right then. Ah. Second player, it's good to have you on board. <laughs> I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. It's a, I, mm. You too? <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire like species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. The fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. Fungus. I'm not particularly it's picky. In the fridge. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Oh, right. Come on then, let's go. Funny. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. 
There was the escape bit. Yeah, let's go and do that. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any New human age music. life. New age music. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. I need to see that, that kind eye. of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed you, for a 47. few moments with some calming New Age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Let's go. Loading. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Let's go this way. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Mind Control for Escape, yes. This way. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. I do? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Not listening to you, Mr. Narrator. You're lying At to me again. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Ooh, ooh red door. Red hole in the ground. Whee! Whoa! Do we have the long fall boot to prevent my legs being broken? As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Uh? Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was a swishy machine. Loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned <laughs> and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Goodbye, Mr. Narrator. I got a squish now. Farewell, Stanley cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Ah! Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Stanley Parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? I don't know. You tell me, Mrs. Narrator. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? I am. Oh. Oh. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game was built. Sections have been added and altered through development. The recall layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Hello, police siren. You are loud. Uh, corridor. Da, da, da. Okay. It's like a little museum. Solitaire. I want to play. Oh, turned it off. And that one. Ha. Doors. Oh, buttons.
credits. Which way do I go? That way? It's a museum. Museum of the game. Go upstairs. War zone. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that I will just stop for a minute. You can pause and read it. It's been out for nine years. Well, it was sent to Steam nine years ago. A big empty. Oh, oh hello. Hold on. That's really difficult to read. There we go. Ah. Are you a rock? No, I'm a person. Bike noise. Where the hell do I go? What do we do? Early versions of the game. Exit. Yeah, let's go for the exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Off. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No. Perhaps not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Well, I can't see anything at the moment. What I see is black. But listen to me. Oh, no, not you again. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time Hello, choose Hello, squishy thing. You. Don't let time choose. Ow. <laughs> Love that just flesh noise. Just looking out my window, someone walking through that three Domino's pizza boxes. Oh, that's tempting. No. Bad hands, not. Stop it. No pizza for you. Hello. Black screen. Anything else? Do I have to? I literally have to do that. Okay. Begin the game again. Well, that's another ending. Back here again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Get bored of you saying that. Let's go. Go to the door to the left. There's one more when thing Stanley I want to do. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I did. The last time I'm going to do that for you, though, I'll tell you that. Meeting room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his. Oh no! Oh no! 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 no. Not again! I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Oh, I'm done here. Right. This Coming time, to a staircase, we'll Stanley down. walked upstairs to his boss's office. No. Uh, this way. <gasps> Car. But Stanley so. just couldn't do it. Again? He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Oh, and no, in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. Everyone's got and then crazy. something oh, occurred to Stanley. Still coffee. Maybe. He thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a oh. single moment for no reason uh -huh. at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why uh. did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they yeah. simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. I'm dreaming. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. 
And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. Mm. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently uh. float above the ground. Oh my god! <laughs> Then he imagined himself oh, soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too Ooh. appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had space. still not woken Went up. Space. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Isn't that now normal? the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. This is too weird. I'm dreaming about a voice a describing mad. me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if seriously. this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now yep. as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, <laughs> that this was, weird. in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? Yeah. How else would the voice explain all that? It's this voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, <sighs> the press of the mattress on his back. Ooh. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. Yep. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. I have a wife? All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. I'm not normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Nope, didn't work. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh dear. What happened? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, hello Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Oh, no, Stanley! And though she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Good girl. Don't take responsibility. <laughs> that was a weird ending. Is that the ending? Is that, is that it for that one? Yeah, it is. Uh, we'll do one more. We'll do one more. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. This time, I'm not taking your answers. Good when Stanley Sorry. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope. 
This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Hmm, employee lounges are nice. Ooh, ah, nice and blue. Yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really chairs. been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few coffee. moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Yep. Stan but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. The first open door on my left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I, I need that sign on my door. <laughs> Do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop it. Ooh. Warehouse. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Do not jump from a cargo lift when it is in motion. It will cause death. Stupid sign. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I don't know about that. I realise that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Oh? Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. But I want now, I'm to. I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Her? This is Do it, her. Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put what your I'm... work aside. What's in him? To let her Fragile. back into your life. She's been waiting. Oh. Oh. A phone. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. I hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? <laughs> okay. No, that wasn't <laughs> yes, supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, dear. Let me double check. Uh, no, I didn't even know. I'd... It's definitely <laughs> here, clear as day. Stanley picks just... up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. But I don't guys. understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. What? How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <gasps> Recognize me. I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. Well, it's as though it? you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have no that kind of here. risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe education? this helpful instructional no, video. I don't want any education. Uh. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Uh, there's no one here. I can't practice. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. <laughs> 
Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. <sighs> ah, Whoa. welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has oh, begun God. to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Oh, okay. Oh dear. I'm sorry, Mr. Narrator. I didn't realise that I was actually making a difference. Oh, that's different. Got barriers on it. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Oh. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through Ooh, the story. Order. That story would make no sense at all. Uh, we just need to get you time. home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. <laughs> reality sucks. Especially the past two years, reality's been horrible. Right, go back the way we came, through this way, through the employee lounge. That was the last decision. Oh, he's going to take him back to the doors, isn't he? <coughs> Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Will I? Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope. No! Why did you do that? Oh God. Quickly, hurry back oh in dear. the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh my God. <laughs> what have I done? Perhaps I'm not too late. Okay, all right, all right. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. Look, I'll go the right way. I'll go the right way. It's fine. It's okay. It's fine. Okay. Oh, it's not it's fine. Ruined. It's not you, fine. I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story. Oh my You've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? This is my what paradise. What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? <laughs> Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. No! I have to. Don't do it! I have to. No! Oh God! I'm sorry. Wow, I'm plugging a phone there to this. Oh, we're back. Whoa, whoa! What the hell happened? Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish, with you, you, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. I thought I was what, yours. did you think that would be funny? Yes. You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. Nah. That thought Never. hadn't even occurred to you, had it? Nah. That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Not. Oh. I'm in my thirties. <laughs> my story. <laughs> if you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. I've done it would that. have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Nope. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite okay. sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. 
When Stanley came to a okay. set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, this time I believe you. I can be like Stanley, don't worry. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. It's locked. Coming to a staircase, Ooh, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, it's green. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. <clears throat> He drew a sharp breath, and then spoke the code. I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> I forgot what he said. Oh, come on, you'll say it again, surely. La 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 la. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. Although this probably won't work. Nothing. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? No. Please speak the code into the receiver. I did. Otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. I have no mouth, yet I must scream. You didn't supply me with a mouth. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? Fun. You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set oh. of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This is weird. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. The end! I need you to I walk mean, through the door. That was a weird ending. Are you Thank you for to playing. Me? Oh, it's not me? the end. There's so many is more right? endings to do. Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Oh, he sounds so sad. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. Aww. So, you hear me? I do. You are can't you hear me, can you? You're listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Is that it? Maybe I did the endings in the wrong order. I, ooh, that's different. That's a shortcut. Right, well that'll do for today. Um, it showed the credits there, but of course there's so many more options we can take, so we'll come back to that at a time. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.